Good afternoon and happy last day of May. We are on the cusp of meteorological summer. For the meteorologists, they use June, July, and August for summertime, which is very easy compared to the astronomical time, which is, of course, from the solstice to the solstice. So as we embark on one term of summer, I am going to introduce a little bit more about the artist's way. Why am I choosing this for the summer reading program? Because quite a few people in my writing classes have brought it up. Some people say I'm doing morning pages, meaning they get up every morning and write three pages by hand, as per Julia Cameron says in this book. And it is really just a way of getting everything off your chest, seeing what you have to say, seeing what you think. Um, it was, oh, I always forget who said it, but several writers have said, I know, don't know what I think until I see what I write. Now, writing pages in the morning is a wonderful thing, and I have done it on and off. I am the type of person that does not want to work a program diligently day after day after day because I just start to rebel. However, it is a beautiful tool that is available at all times. Sometimes I wake up and I say, it is time for morning pages. And then I'll go a week or two weeks and I find that my days are better because I have processed everything I need to process right when I wake up. Other stretches of time, I know I need to get outside. I'll go out, go for a walk or a run. A program is not meant to constrict you, but free you. At least that's my belief. So the summer reading program, 12 weeks and 12 chapters, is meant to give you a way to delve into this, knowing that there are other people participating also. It is so hard to read these days, I think. Well, because we always think there's something online, we should be doing something else. Just time is like this. So one antidote, I think, to that is that we read together. And that is almost impossible, right? Getting your schedule together to do something, especially over the summer. However, with the miracle of the way things are working today, you can connect with me through my substack called Let's Practice Together. Usually it's focused on writing, but this summer it will be focused on reading. Essentially, I'll be sending out one prompt a week or one reminder a week talking a little bit about the, the chapter coming up, something to focus on, something to highlight. And then you go ahead and read with everybody else who's in the program. And you'll know that you're not alone. And that next week, there'll be another little email coming along, a post on Substack. You can get it by email or via the app. And you can just get some um, encouragement and insights. I am also pursuing, I've started a band, which is just another app where I'll send the link. And if you want to participate that way, what's kind of fun about band is you can go in and you can just say, oh, I finished this week's task or I participated and I'll have a few little encouragements for people to share things, maybe insight something that they liked. And this way we can track what's our favorite quotes, um, maybe any fun pictures, like somebody, maybe you could get somebody to snap a picture of you um, reading by the pool or under a tree. I don't know. What I like to do is explore. There's no way ever to know what is going to be the impact of something that you do. And it's impossible and frustrating to set out. And I've tried it many times. I'm going to make a plan and this is my goal and this is what's going to happen. And invariably, it's not what happens. And I tired of losing out on my life as I'm looking for something to coalesce that is maybe not meant to be, or I'm looking over here for this particular result when over there something really miraculous is happening. So I'm looking at a way of being that is more about playing and exploring. And that's what Let's Practice Together is all about. If you haven't been in any of my classes, um, in the writing classes, I have a prompt. And then we have quiet time writing together. And if you haven't done it, you will not believe, even on Zoom, even if sometimes people turn their cameras off, this sense of camaraderie or togetherness, there is a magic there. It's hard to uh, explain. 
there's something called focus mate. If you don't know about focusmate.com, you can just connect with another person anywhere in the world, state your goals, and then you work quietly side by side. And that I did it once. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is a miracle. So what I'm hoping is this summer, some, some of us will have this miraculous sense of reading together and it will give us a groundedness and a permission. We need permission to sit quietly and do something. And that's okay. That's just how it is these days. But we'll have permission from each other to sit and read. And again, Artist's Way has 12 chapters, um, but there is an introduction. And then there's a section called Spiritual Electricity, the basic principles and the basic tools. And that goes up to about page 23. So I'm going to recommend that if you want to participate to read that before uh, the June 5th, I'll put out some more reminders. Um, and it's it's pretty easy reading. I like her book because she has the um, big margins and then the quotes on the side. And there's always kind of a fun quote. It's showing it backwards on my screen. So let me see what it says. The primary imagination I hold to be the living power. And Samuel Taylor Coleridge wrote that. If you don't know Coleridge, he wrote The Ancient Mariner, as well as many other things. But he, um, water, water everywhere and not a drop to drink. That's one of my favorite all-time poetic lines, Samuel Taylor Coleridge. And it's very interesting because in college, actually I was in England, I did a report on him. And I thought it was going to be boring as heck. And somehow when I sat down with my notes and my friend was presenting with me, it just came out like a miracle. Everybody loved it. And we were taken up by how the energy ran through us. And seriously, I think that was part of it. We had um, let our imagination go and it was like a living power was racing through us. And as much as we want to understand life, I really think it's uh, Joseph Campbell says that people don't want to understand life. They want to experience it but we often get stuck in our heads for good reason, because that's what's been valued in our, our society. So, but again, coming back to a cre creative approach to life and openness and an exploring where we think we know so much, but really we don't know hardly anything. I mean, for instance, right now, everything around me is made of molecules and scientists say, I've never seen it obviously, but Within a molecule, the space between the electrons and the atoms and the protons is something like from here to the sun. So there's a huge amount of space surrounding me right now that I can't even perceive, but it's here. And if you think about the extent, the universe is always expanding, right? there, And that if you look at um, pictures from astronomers, billions of galaxies, billions of stars. And in our imagination, in this living power, we can go all the way to the end of the universe. And that is beyond anything we can actually comprehend, but it's existing and we are here. Some people think that makes them feel small, but it's actually enlivening. We are here in the middle of all this. It's a miracle. And all we really have is our perception. Our knowledge is finite, but the possibilities are infinite. And I believe we can get there through creativities. Hence, doing something like practicing together, exploring, playing, letting go of everything, having to be the way that we think it is because it's, it's difficult to grasp onto that and to hold on. It just takes so much energy. So... Let's practice together. Let's let go of what we think we know and let's find out what we might be able to learn. Um, really quick, I wanted to say that, oh, maybe I lost it. The basic principles are creativity is the natural order of life. Life is energy, pure creative energy. Two, there's an underlining, underlining, underlying, indwelling creative force infusing all of life including ourselves. Three, when we open to our creativity, we open ourselves to the creator's creativity with us in our lives. So all that's around us that we don't understand, when we open ourselves to our creativity, all of that can start to live within us and work with us and maybe for us. 
for we are ourselves are creations and we in turn are meant to be creative, continue creativity by being creative ourselves. So we're creations and then we expand out from there. Five, creativity is God's gift to us and our using our creativity is our gift back to God. If God isn't a word that you align with, you can insert whatever you like because you're a creative being and have a creative imagination. So creativity is someone is a gift to us, the universe's gift to us. And being creative is a way that we can reciprocate. Six, the refusal to be creative is self-will and is counter to our true nature. That's a big nut to crack. I'm not going to go there right now, but we will talk about that more later. When we open ourselves to exploring our creativity, we open ourselves to God, the universe, and everything, which ultimately is good orderly direction. So that's another big nut to crack. That's why I want to read this over the summer and not try to do it all right now. As we open our creative channel to the creator, many gentle but powerful changes are to be expected. So there's, I think there's a human thing. We always are looking for change. And this is an opportunity by opening to our creativity and acting within the accord of our own being. So that's kind of exciting. Nine, it is safe to open ourselves to the great, to greater and greater creativity. This is really important, a feeling of safety. So let's explore how we can make that happen. There's no reason to uh, shove ourselves off a cliff in pursuit of, of creativity. It's a little counterintuitive, unless you're a parachute builder who can do really fast work. Our creative dreams and yearnings come from a divine source, come from a source that's greater than ourselves. Even if you don't believe in a divine God, you just have, there's, you know, what makes a plant grow? There's something beyond just the physical because a seed is just a seed. It's an inert object until the magic of the uh, natural world and some kind of source activates it to grow into a plant. As we move toward our dreams, we move toward divinity or toward this greater uh, capacity, this greater knowing. And there used to be kind of, I don't know, this, this sense of zeitgeist of like, oh, we got to try so hard. We've got to conquer nature. We've got to be our best selves. We have to prove something to the universe and make our mark. But it might be their way to be, but I find that so exhausting. There's... There may be another way. And Julia Cameron, this was written in 1992. So when I'm talking about a long time ago, I think I might be looking toward, you know, sort of the Mad Max type of um, approach to life. But if you are looking for a new and different approach, and uh, maybe it's not even new and different, you just want to expand yourself into um, discovering and recovering your creative self through a reading program this summer, 12 weeks. 12 chapters, just soaking it up. Please do join me. Uh, the link is in the description. Let's practice together.substack.com. Actually, Substack is just practice together.substack.com. And I look forward to having you with me and just enjoying all the resources that are available to us and opening ourselves to seeing how they might change and impact our life. Until the next time, do take care. And again, I'm Kat Fitzpatrick, writer, teacher, outdoor educator.